Glory to God, it's time to get in the word. And that's why we're here. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, hold on. Change is coming. Oh God, my oh God, my God. We have seen change in this life. Come on, somebody. We have seen change in this life. Everything in this life is subject to change. Either to get better or to get worse. But change is a must. Come on, somebody. But God is the one who ensures that our change is for the better. And not for the worse. For there is a way that seemeth right to a man. For the ways thereof. The ways of death. It looks good to him. Feels good. He even thinks he has it all arranged in his mind. But God knows that many are the plans of men. But it's the purpose of God that will stand. Come on, somebody. You don't know what the next hour holds for you. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. But the Lord already knows. Come on. And if you trust in the Lord, it's a good change that is going to come. Hello, somebody. There are others that will get change, but it will not be good. Hello. But the Lord is saying in you that are trusting in him, hold on. Change is coming. Can I talk to somebody? I said, change is coming. Many believe the world will continue as it was. And some even convince some saints to believe that they are waiting on the Lord in vain. And Peter wrote about that. That in the last days, scoffers will come. Those who will say, we have heard. From our great, great, great grandparents. That the Lord was coming. Where is he now? Things continue the same as it always was. But what did Peter say? They will fully. They what? They will fully forget. In other words, this is not just a miss in judgment. By mistake. This was intentionally done. Huh? When it said willfully forget. This wasn't just something that just escaped the mind. But something the person chose intentionally. To neglect. To forget. To put aside from their memory. And that's in Second Peter 3. Verse 5. Paul, Peter says, for this they willfully, they what? They willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water in the water by which the world that then existed. Wait, what did it say about the world? It said the world that then existed. Is the same one we're looking at? No, it's not. The one we are looking at has been vastly changed because of that flood. That's why archaeologists can be digging up cities and, and grounds and palaces under the ground. Those were not built under the ground. They were above ground. But now they are underground. Come on. The surface. Huh? The geographic nature of the land. Has changed. But they say. Everything continues the same. So that's why Peter says. Is it true. That everything continues the same. From the beginning. He says. For this they will fully forget. Come on. That by the word of God, the heavens 
were of old and the earth standing out of water and in water by which the world that then existed perished what he said the world that existed then happened to it the world that then existed perish being flooded with water come on now and scientists and archaeologists have checked and found that there are water marks even on the highest mountain peak in the globe so they know that this wasn't just in an area where Noah was this was worldwide we have not had it like that since then come on so 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 for someone to say it continues the same not never change that's a lie history has that in record come on worldwide flood and everything outside the ark perish come on now and i talk to you here they will fully forget that information and form a conclusion everything continue just the same really come on did he give more examples yes he did he says the heavens and the earth which are now the heaven what and the earth which are now are what preserved by the same word the same word they don't want to hear the same word that says man write it to treat them up the same word that say they don't believe the same word they reject he says the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for what for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of who ungodly men are all men ungodly not at all the word of god speaks of the righteous and it speaks of the ungodly psalms 1 declares that he says the righteous they are like trees planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in their season their leaves will not wither and whatsoever they do will prosper who are those righteous he says they are the one who trust in the lord they meditate in his word day and night come on now ah uh, the same word the world rejects the same word the world says they don't want to hear all they want is the money and the food and the things and they are right he says it's not money food and things keeping the world he said it is the word of god that make you have dry land to stand on is the word of god in creation spoke and called for land to come from under the sea when the seas and the water were over the earth and darkness covered the earth it was god who spoke and called for dry land to appear so he said it is the word that brought forth land for man to live on oh my god and he said it's the same word made the whole world flood again and now he says now it is being reserved by the same word for fire come on somebody hello uh, come on he said the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of who ungodly men they have willfully forget those things uh, and they claim that everything continues the same 
But Peter made more reference of other cases of how God dealt with things in heaven, in the world, the past world, and in the what? In the world to come. Ah. Uh, that's in 2 Peter 2. In 2 Peter 2, verse 4 to 6, it says, For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, can angels sin? Oh, yes. And did God spare them because they're angels? No. He says, Though they are angels in heaven who had sinned, God did not spare them. But cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. Hello. And what else didn't he spear? In the earth now, he said he did not spear the ancient world. There's an ancient world that perished. Come on. Some of the creatures that lived then are not living now. Come on. Their species did not survive. Come on. He says then, look and pay attention. He says, God did not spare the ancient world. But save Noah. One of eight people. A preacher. Of righteousness bringing in the flood on who on the world of the ungodly the flood didn't come in on Noah the flood didn't come in on Noah's family the flood didn't come in on who Noah put in the ark with him the animals and creatures but on those outside I'm talking to somebody. Hello? He did not spear that ancient world. Do you read that? And then it speaks, what else did not God spear? Then he showed a sample of the fire on earth. A sample of that fire is revealing Sodom and Gomorrah. Two cities. Not the whole world. Just two. Turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Hello. They were beaten down with fire and brimstone till the land itself was beat down below sea level. Sodom and Gomorrah beat down below sea level. Where Sodom and Gomorrah was is where it's now called the Dead Sea. A body of water upon land. Come on now. Not even fish can live in it. Nothing now lived there from that time till now. They're extracting salt from it. Come on now. You need to know this stuff. So when you say everything continues the same, where is Sodom and Gomorrah? Where is the habitation of who was living there? This is a sign. This is a what? A sign that God leave in history of creation for man to examine. Think about how he respond to those who continue in sin. Huh? What did he say about them in Sodom and Gomorrah? He condemned them to destruction. Making them an example. To who? To those who afterward would live ungodly. In other words, he knew that afterwards many would still come. Despite what they say, they see what happened to those who live ungodly. They would still determine to live ungodly. Come on now somebody. 
And then said, why God would destroy in good, good people them? Yeah, good, good people. When you're in a sin. Nothing is good about sin. God did not make his creation for sin. The creation was made by his word. Kept by his word. And it's because creation turned against his word. All these disasters are breaking out in the land. Flood. Hurricane. Earthquake. Storm. Typhoon. Huh? God then made that as natural things in the earth. Come on, somebody. But the more man turn from God's word, that whole things together, everything will start to fall apart. That's why he says that the moon will turn to blood. The sun will refuse to shine. The stars will start to fall out of their place. Come on now. Because it's the word that holds it together. And when there's no one there who believes in the word, it will perish. That's why once Noah was in the ark, everyone outside perished. That's why when Lot moved out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Is the righteous keeping the land? God did not make the land for the unrighteous. Lord Jesus. It is those who are keeping the word. That are keeping the earth in its place. I want you to understand that even Abraham and God have such a dialogue already when God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham knew that Lot was down there with his family and was saying to the Lord, if there's 50 down there, 50 out of two cities, 50 who are righteous, will you spare the cities? For the fifty sake, not for the whole city sake. For the fifty righteous sake. And the Lord said, if there are fifty righteous one there, he will spare them for the fifty. My God in heaven, talk to me now. And the world have so much cussing. Tracing, hostility, scoffing and mocking to those who live in righteously. When are we the keeping of you? You don't know yourself. Genesis 18, Genesis 18, verse 24 to 26. No, it was what? Abraham who said it to the Lord. Suppose there were 50 righteous, not 50 people. Not 50 people have a good mind towards God. 50 people who are righteous. Huh? He says, suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for whose sake? For the 50 righteous that are in it. In other words, the 50 righteous in it will benefit from being there. But when they're gone, nobody now going to benefit. The other thing, you know, he says, far be it from you to do such a thing as this, Abraham said to God, to slay the righteous with the wicked. Come on. So that the righteous should be as the wicked. In other words, he's saying, God don't treat the righteous like going to treat the wicked. They don't know that part. They, that part they now switch to them. They have a different report. They hear one different gospel. 
That's why them they think like that. Not true. He says, Far be it from you to do such a thing. To slay the righteous with the wicked. So that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Come on. So the Lord said to Abraham, If I find what? If I find in Sodom, where? That filthy, immoral, whorish, homosexual place. He said, if I find 50 righteous within it, then I will spare all the place for their sake, for the 50 sake. Mm? And then can they show off with them gay pride? Show up and then, then gay pride upon those who have said wrong? Mm? You know, remember Solomon tomorrow? They will fully forget. Know that we say? Know that the word said to? Okay, they will fully forget. So it says, the Lord said, if I find 15 that place of spirit for their sake. Give me more. And he went way down from 50 to Abraham negotiating and interceding for Saddam and Gomorrah. To say, what if it's five short? 20, 50. What if it's 45? And the Lord says, I will not destroy it. If I find 45. Then he say well. What if it's 40? What if it's 10 short the 50? The Lord said I will not destroy it. If I find 40 there. He said what if it's 30? Go with 20 short. Huh? The Lord said I will not do it. If I find 30. Then what he say? What if it's 20? My God, did they go so low for this whole city? Huh? 20. Lord said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 20. Come on. Then he said, Lord, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak but once more. Suppose 10. 10. Lord Jesus. That's the basic number they have said. You just start church. Eight to ten people. Hello, somebody. And he said, What if there's ten? And the Lord said, If I find even ten, for the sake of the ten, I will not destroy it. So the Lord went his way as soon as he had finished speaking to Abraham. And Abraham returned to his place. Come on, somebody. Huh? And still, though there was only one. That was what Peter was talking about when he says in what? First Peter 3. Second Peter 3. Second Peter 2, yes. Second Peter 2 from verse 6 to 8. He said, turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them what? An example to those who afterward would live ungodly. And but what did he do? Was anyone spared from down at Sodom and Gomorrah? Yes, there it is. He delivered righteous lot. Did he say righteous lot? I believe saying righteous then. He said, delivered righteous lot. Who was oppressed? Who was what? Who was what? Oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man. Dwelling among them, tormented his righteous soul from day to day. The man begs, 
Come on. By seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. The sinful things they take part in. Come on. Huh? Come on. But God delivered Lot out of it, didn't he? So what did Peter say? In 2 Peter 2 verse 9 to 11. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Oh, come on now. You can't keep sinning and talk about your godly. It's temptation. He said, deliver in your time. And even deliver you out of sin. You can't still do it and say, you delivered. But many have not accepted that truth. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve who? The unjust is the ungodly and the punishment for the day of judgment. And especially who? Those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. And what? Despise authority. Your thing says despise authority. So despise the king of Sodom. It was despise authority because it is size lot. They never despise the king of Sodom. It's lot they despise. Because they said you're going like you're a judge among us. You go for your come here and go and tell me what right and what wrong, like say you are a judge. And if you don't let those men to us, we're going to do to you. What are we going to do to them? That's what they said to Lot. Huh? Give you a reference. Come on, give me the reference so you can see it on the screen. And we're coming back to what we said there in Second Peter 2. Genesis 19. Huh? Genesis 19 verse 8 to 9. He says, see now, Lot said to them, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you. You may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men. Only what? Do nothing to these men. Why? Since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof, in the, under my care. Huh? They said, stand back. Then they said to Lot, what? This one coming to stay here. And he keeps acting as a judge. Go on like he won't tell us what we can do. And what we cannot do. Come on now. So this means that this wasn't the first time Lot was addressing their lawless deeds. What they said, you come here to go on like you're a judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. So they pressed hard against the man Lot and came near to break down the door. Come on. But the men, those were angels actually, reached out their hands and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut the door. And they struck the men who were at the doorway, come on, of the house with what? With blindness, both small and great. So they became weary trying to find the door. All when them blinded still try to find the door. They're still trying to commit the act. That's why I said on Sunday, 666, not just a mark on the hand and the forehead. It is a seal and mark 
of idolatry. It's a mark that person have given over their whole hearts to their idols and refuse to serve the true and living God. And God condemned them who are such. Just like he did with Sodom and Gomorrah. Hello. So what, what did the angel say? The angel said to Lot, have you anyone else here? Son-in-law, your sons, your daughters, whomever you have in the city. Take them out of this place. For we will destroy this place. Because the outcry against them has grown great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us. To destroy it. Come on somebody. And he told them. That they must leave. Huh? They must leave because they cannot do nothing. While they are still there. Not true. Hallelujah. That's in 21. 21 to 23. He said to them. See I have favored you. Concerning this thing. In that I will not overthrow this city for which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there. For I cannot do anything until you arrive there. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zor. Come on. Huh? Think about this, people. Think about this. We are serving the same God. That same God declares for the righteous sake. I will spare the earth. That's why the Lord said to his disciples. You are the salt of the earth. Salt is used to preserve things from going in corrosion and being destroyed. And he calls them salt of the earth. But he did not call them salt of the world. The world now he says you are light of the world. Light means you are going to expose. You are going to expose the evil deeds of the world. You are going to convict them of sin. Hello. Now, when persons who are in the church, some of them say they receive the Holy Spirit to convict them of sin. They don't know what they receive the Holy Spirit for. You know? The Holy Spirit they receive is for you to be holy and convict the world of sin. It's not to convict you. Jesus spoke about that in John 16, just for the record. Just for the record for those who doubt. John 16, verse 6 to 9. You're there? John 16, verse 6 to 9, he says, But because I said these things to you, sorrows fill your heart, Jesus said. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is for your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, who is that? The Holy Spirit will not come to you. If I depart, I will send him to you and when he has come he will what convict the saints of sin no convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin why because they do not believe in me if they believe in Jesus they would stop sin because they would know he came to save them from their sins. How can they be saved from something they're still meddling in? They're not saved from it when they're still entangling it. So they truly have not known the Lord. Lord Jesus. First John 
3, verse 5 and 6. Huh? Hallelujah. Says that he was manifested to take away our sin. And in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins means they continue. That's why I say sins. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. That sounds like they know him. Now they have church full of believers who are still a sinner and say they know him. That means that be a liar and hypocrites. Come on. Because the word of truth tells us that when we know him, sin no longer has dominion over us. We walk in newness of life. Come on, somebody. And his spirit dwells in us. And because of his spirit dwelling in us, he gives us power over sin. He helps us in our times of being tempted. He makes a way of escape so that we are able to bear it. He says in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13, there is no temptation taken you that is not common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond measure, beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, but what? With the temptation, make a way of escape that you are able to bear it. Hello, somebody. Can I talk to you here? Huh? Does that sound like he allowing us to be tempted and fall and just pick us up? And you're singing about we fall down and we get up for a saint. It's just a sinner who fall down and get up. Did the Lord say that? Not at all, but an adulterer who was unfaithful to his wife. <laughs> Wrote that song and the church picked it up. And I'm not talking about Danny McClurkin. Danny McClurkin only re, re, re sing the song that the writer wrote. Look it up. It's a man with infidelity to his wife. His wife tired of going through the whole course and course with him. He always have to go through counseling and session with him and some other woman. And she decides, said, this is it. And he wrote that song, we fall down and we get up. For a saint is just a sinner who fall down and get up. If you don't know the issues of some things you're not know, singing, and pick it up like it's gospel, and it's not gospel. Till I some talking about just man fall seven times. Huh? That fall seven times doesn't have to do with sin. It has to do with disasters that he goes through. Like Job. It was a sin that was making that happen to Job. The Lord revealed that. Just disasters he's going through. So when he says seven times, means means, boy, enough. It full. It complete. Huh? It matches what he says. Many are the afflictions. Afflictions are hard times. Is that sin? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them. Like he did with Job. Delivers them out of them all. But because they have a perverted gospel. The gospel they receive allows them to condone sin. In their lives and call it being human. The gospel they receive allow them to participate in sin and still say we're righteous. We are people of God. But it goes against what the word of God says. And the word, the gospel doesn't go against what the word of God says. Hello. Come on. That's why Jesus will say to some in Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23, Not all that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter.
enter the kingdom of heaven. But those who what? Those who what? Does the will of my father in heaven. He says many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? And done many wonders, that's miracles, in your name. The Lord never said they never done it in his name. Notice, the Lord never denied that they did that. Because there is power in his name to do such. And if you believe in the power in his name, demons will run. You will cast out demons. You can speak in new tongues. Huh? Come on. You can do miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. But you must remember, if you're still practicing sin, you don't know him yet. You're just using his name. Come on now. There are many persons who know the names of some manager and some well influential people and use their name at the gate and get through in the place not true. But when the manager or the person come and say I don't know him then they are thrown out. Because they know his name. But they don't know him. Come on now somebody. So that's why in 1 John 2, verse 4 to 6, 3 to 6, he says, how do we know that we know him? Come on. What did he say? How do we know that we know him? He says, by this we know that we know him. If we what? If we keep his commandments. He who says I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Now, sir, but whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. He says whoever keeps his word, whoever what? Keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him by this we know that we are in him he who says he abides in him what art himself also to what walk just as he walked what he said in first john 3 verse 6 doesn't that agree with it first john 3 verse 6 he says whoever abides in him does not sin whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Oh, that sound. Come on. Does that sound like the gospel that's preached today in the churches? Hello, somebody. Because we know. <laughs> we know that in the Lord. Praise God. God is saying something different from what the world is saying. Those who want to abide what God is saying will experience new life. Those who want to go by the world will not know the life the Lord is speaking. They will call it foolishness. They will say it's not true. They do not receive those spiritual things. Come on, somebody. But those who receive the Spirit, the Holy Spirit unveils these things to them. That they can know the things that God has prepared for them in Christ Jesus. Come on. The world does not receive the Holy Spirit. They cannot receive the Holy Spirit. Why is that? They have rejected the Lord. Hello. Come on. Jesus said that in John 14, verse 15 to 17. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father. And he will what? Give you another helper. Who is that? The Holy Spirit. That he may abide with you forever. 
the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Did he say the world can receive the Holy Spirit? So you can stay in an all your prayer meeting, your all night prayer meeting, and street vigil out in the night here they bleach out. They pray all night for the world to save. They're not going to save. Sorry if I don't join you. Your passion to save the world. Like you're saving the wheel. Save Willie. But the Jesus says that they cannot receive the Holy Spirit. So they're going to save without the Holy Spirit. How are they going to be saved without the Holy Spirit? Now that's why some don't understand why when Jesus prayed in John 17, Jesus said, I pray not for the world. But you still have pray for them. Because you don't study scriptures. You want to follow the world and make the world pleased with you. Because when the world hear they pray for them, they say, nice preacher. A good preacher that they pray for me. So we can live long healthy wealthy and blessed in our sin eh? friendship with the world is enmity with god in first in saint john 17 saint john 17 verse 9 to 11 hear jesus praying this is jesus praying and Jesus says, I pray for them. Who is the them? His disciples. I do not pray for the world. But for those whom you have given me. It's not the world. <laughs> those are those who are separated from the world. The called out ones. Ecclesia. The church. That's who Jesus is praying for. Jesus says, I pray not for the world, but for those whom you have given me. For they are yours. And all are mine are yours. And yours are mine. And I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world. But these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. Keep to your name those whom you have given me that they may be one as we are one. Come on. See what Jesus is praying for the church to be one. But now they use denominational names separate themselves and have contrary doctrines that now through their contrary doctrine they think they can come in a house of God and do anything because they are not regulated by what God's word say by what they feel what they speak and they think God should do hello and we are saying from the word of God, not so. Hallelujah. The word of God sets the rules. You don't set the rules. The word of God created everything that was created. It is created by the word. And it is created for the word. So those that agree with the word, they are standing as those who are keeping the ground that the word made. They are called the salt of the earth. But they are called the light of the world. What are they there to do? To expose the wicked deeds of the world. Not to partake in them. To expose them. Hello somebody. Because if they are not exposed. Then you are what they call what? 
an accessory to the crime. He say when criminals are in criminal activity and you're hiding things for them. Not you. You are what? You are in accomplice to them in the crime. Come on. But he says that we are calling you to expose them. To what? No man. They say no. We have to keep with life. We can't talk. Because they say infamous if he did. Hello. But the Lord says he that love his life in this world will lose it. But he that ate his life in this world for my sake will find it again. Hello. That's why the Lord said to his disciples, whatever I said to you in secret, shout it on the house top. What I spoke to in the dark, declare it in the light. Come on. Don't be afraid of them who only can destroy the body. But fear the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Because he said light don't cover up. Light exposes things. People don't hide things in light. And the Lord calls you light of the world. But he called it children of darkness. Children of darkness. He calls those disobedient. Huh? Ungodly. Unjust. Unrighteous. That's why David said the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. Come on. Hello. Why? Because he says the ungodly don't abide in the word. The ungodly don't abide in the house of God. The ungodly don't abide in Christ. He says he who abides in Christ does not sin. He said the ungodly they are like the chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Sinners will not stand in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. Come on, somebody. It is the righteous that is keeping the land. And soon as the righteous are gone, it will all fall apart. You will see things start to manifest in the earth that you never saw manifested before. Things start to manifest in the sea and in the heavens that they never saw before. And Revelation gives some description of them. Because those who are godly ones are gone. Come on. And they don't understand. It's a warning to them. It's a what? It's a warning to the ungodly. Come on somebody. That the earth will be destroyed. By fire. And there be no place for them to hide here. Come on. They'll even cry out. Let the mountains fall on us. Because we cannot stand the wrath of God. You think you can stand the wrath of God? The wrath of God is more terrible than the wrath of men. World War II and World War I together have not destroyed the amount of lives that that flooded Noah's day had destroyed. World War I and World War II together has not destroyed two cities that no longer on the land. Like God did with Saddam and Gomorrah. God gave us examples of his wrath. Hello. And he said it in Romans 1. Verse 18 to 31. He said the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Against what? All ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Who suppress the truth. They hold it down. Neglect. Huh? The truth in unrighteousness, they treat the truth like a lie. 
because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by what the things that are made in the eternal power and guarded so that what they are without excuse come on somebody huh because although they knew God they did not glorify him as God nor were thankful but became what futile in their thoughts their foolish hearts were darkened professing to be wise they became fools changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things come on therefore God also what gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies to what dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie huh? and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever amen for this reason God gave them up to vile passions for even the woman exchanged the natural use for what is against nature huh likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burn in their lust for one another burn in their lust for one another men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty for the error which is due even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to what a debased mind a debased mind is a mind that lacks moral judgment wrong look right and right look wrong right feel wrong and wrong feel right come on god gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting huh being filled with what all unrighteousness sexual immorality wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder strife deceit evil mindedness they are whisperers backbiters haters of god violent proud boasters inventors of evil things disobedient to parents undiscerning mean they lack judgment <laughs> untrustworthy come on somebody unloving unforgiving unmerciful hello somebody look at this who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things they know those who practice such things are deserving of death not only do they do the same but they also approve and applaud those who practice them and they talk about God not born up in good, good people. Go and see if you are in good, good people. Turn from sin to God. Turn from darkness to light. 
Turn from evil to good. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Come on, somebody. You cannot serve God and the devil. You cannot serve two masters. Hello, somebody. If the word of God have any root in you, it will lead you to a life that you abstain from sin. Hallelujah. Because every time sin comes in, it rips up every part of relationship you have with God. And you have to start all over again. And we are saying it doesn't have to be that endless cycle of fall down and get up. But Paul says, having done all, stand. And he says, God is able to even make the weak stand. Because his strength is perfect, even in your weakness. So even your weakness is not an excuse for sin. That's why he can call you perfect. Because he said, I put my spirit in you. And if you abide in me, you will not sin. Come on, somebody. But you don't believe. And those who don't believe are calling God a liar. And no one can call God a liar and be saved. The devil is a liar. And if you are serving the devil, we understand why your things say God lie. Because you believe the devil is telling you truth. You believe the devil is stronger than God. You believe that the, na the sinful nature is stronger than the nature of Christ dwelling in you. And so you are a victim to your unbelief. But if you believe the word of God and the power of God, you will see the life God speaks about manifest in you. And then you will be able to say, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And your spirit will bear witness with your spirit that it is so. Come on, somebody. But those who seek to continue sinning and hope that God will just overlook their sinful behavior and still say, it's all right, Agyablai, step in. They are out for a big surprise. The Lord will say to them, depart from me. I never knew you. Because who the Son set free is free indeed. If he truly set you free from sin, he says, you are free indeed from sin. Not temporarily. Permanently. Because he said, it's a job that he does in you. It's not something you try to do yourself. That's what religion teaches you to try. And all you try, you try, you can't do it yet. But because only he can do it through you. And if you keep being you, you will never be it. But if you allow him to be him in you, you will experience the life in him that you never had by yourself. Which is eternal life. In Christ Jesus, unbroken fellowship with God the Father and His Son comes through the Holy Spirit and His Word. You cannot break from the Word and still be one with the Spirit. You cannot break from the Spirit and still be one with the Word. They work as one, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And it says, these three are one. First John 5 verse 9, verse 7. Three that be a record in heaven. Three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And these three are one. And Jesus was praying, let them be one as you and I are one. Jesus doesn't speak something different from what the Father speaks. The Father doesn't speak something different from what the Son is speaking. He says, we must be one with him. And Ephesians 5 verse 1 says, be imitators of God as his dear children. Don't tell me say you can't do it. The devil is a liar. You need to believe what the Lord says. And understand what the devil is telling you that you can't. He's lying to you. God has empowered you to do this. Through the blood of the Lamb. Through the word of God. And through his Holy Spirit. To 
to give you new life and ability to stand against the gates of hell and prevail. And he says, I will build my church of which you are a part of that. And he says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Come on. So if he's prevailing, you are not submitting to the Lord. And you cannot resist the Lord and gain that testimony. You must submit to him. Come on, somebody. Stand, we're going to pray. It's time to release you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lift those hands to Jesus. Glory to God. And start to worship him in the room. You're awesome, Lord. You're all that we need. We come to you today. Want you to draw us close. You said if we draw close to you, you will draw close to us. Because you want your spirit to dwell in us. Mm. Hallelujah. And it's not about just words. It's not just a melody or a song. But we must give us give our whole lives to your God. All hearts love you with all our soul. With all our mind, with all our strength, with all our heart. And leave no room for anything else but just loving you. For you said whatever we do in word, thought, or deed, do all to the glory of God. And sin doesn't bring you glory. It brings you glory to walk in obedience before you. And to give you the praise and the glory. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Worship the Lord in here, people of God. Oh, you need to worship Him. Oh, you need to worship Him. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sitting like he all alone, thinking of you, only you. Ooh. How is it? Hands are shaking. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My hand is empty. I need to know within my heart, crying to you, all I will do be close. Oh, oh, oh. just to be close to you. Close to you, yes, Lord. Closer to you, can I get close? Close to you, yeah. close to you, hey. Closer to you, come on, say it again. Can I get close? <laughs> close to you. Hallelujah. Close to you. Yeah, yeah. Closer to you. Can I get close? Close to you. Yeah. Close to you. Oh, uh -huh. Closer to you. Worship him in the room. Worship the Lord. Draw close to him. He will draw close to you. If you're willing to lay it all down, he will do it for you. 
can't be no more you but must be him send a piece of your life hallelujah I want to cry I want to scream but I don't want to die Jesus before I'm too close to you my heart is beating fast my hands are shaking but I'm still awake Lord want to be close close to you come on you made a cry today you closer to you can I get close come on let me cry your heart hey yeah, yeah close to you hey closer to you Come on, lift those hands and say, Can I get close? I get close, close to you. I get close, close to you. You, you, you're so to you. Hey, can I get close? Hey, close to you. Hey, close to you. Yeah, yeah. Closer to you. Draw me near. Nearer. Nearer, blessed Lord. To the cross. Where thou has died draw me nearer 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 blessed Lord to thy precious bleeding sign Close to you, close to you, close to you, close to you, all alone, my prayer. Savior lives. Ah! Savior lives. Savior lives. Me walk with. Can I get close? Close to you, come on. Close to you, yeah, yeah. Closer to you, yeah. Can I get close? Yeah. Close to you, yeah. Close to you. Let it be the cry from the heart. Closer to you, come on, somebody. Yeah. Can I get close? Hey, close to you. Hey, hey, close to you. You, Lord, closer to you. Hey, can I get close? Hallelujah. Close to you. Hey, close to you. The God, closer to you. Can I get close, close to you, close to you, 
closer to you can I get close close to you close to you closer to you Ooh. yes Lord come on worship him right there is that the cry of your heart? Don't allow anything, anyone to come between you and God. That would be idolatry. And no idolater will inherit the kingdom of God. Come on. It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. Hallelujah. Give it all to Jesus. Surrender all to him. Let him have full complete control. Come on, somebody. You don't have to carry it alone anymore. You don't have to fight it from your own self and your own strength. But you can draw strength from him. From his abiding presence. From his unending power. Oh, God. It's for you today. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. To be closer. Hallelujah. Than you've ever been. Come on, somebody. Let him make his dwelling in you. Be mindful of him. And bless his name. Can I get close? Close to you, close to you, yeah, yeah, closer to you, yeah, get close, close to you, hey, close to you, yeah, yeah. closer to you. Can I get close? Close to you. Close to you. Hey, 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 hey. Close to you. Hallelujah. Can I get close? Hey, hey. Close to you. Hey, boss, close to you. Hey. Close to you. you Lord we lay it all down for you Lord God to know you and the power of your resurrection we have tried it our way and our way has failed but you never fail we give our heart to you you will take the broken pieces and fit them back together again and make something beautiful out of what we have messed up because your work is perfect your ways are true you are holy and you said we must be holy let it be so oh God as we embrace your anointing Destroy every yoke, lift every burden. Rebuke every spirit that is telling us no when you are saying yes. And let faith arise in our hearts. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. We surrender all to you. And said, have your own way, Lord. We rest assured in your care. That you will lead us into all truth. And the truth will make us free. In Jesus' name.
Come on, give him the praise and the glory. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless him in the house. Worship him. Praise him. Glorify him. Thank you, Lord. Worthy of all the praise and the glory. We give him the praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I'm gonna come, let me pray for you. you want me to pray for you. Oh, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you a believer? Praise God. Stand here. Huh? Okay. Father, you are the God that cannot fail. We come before you, and there is nothing you cannot do. You can do anything but fail. Hakarabo Sharabasa. You said if we come humbly before you we'll receive grace for you give grace to the humble but you resist the proud grace is your anointing and power to enable us to do what you call us to do let your grace now come upon this man flood his gates with your power now reduce the works of darkness to ashes reverse everything the enemy has set in progress in his life let your fire consume it now heal him of every infirmity let your healing waters flow from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet renew his mind your mind be as a helmet over his head right now. Your word insulate his thoughts. His mental capacity to be enlightened by your presence and your spirit. And bring in order everything the enemy has set in this array. In the name of Jesus. Cover him Heal him and deliver him. From every work of darkness, every spirit that seeks to oppress him, we bind them and shut them down now. To your angel, close with flaming sword, afflict and torment them, bind them with chains unto everlasting darkness, and evict them from this man now. Every one of them, in the name of Jesus, and clothe them with your own self, Lord. In Jesus' name. 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 Oh, Korababosha. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come here. Yes, come here. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands to the Lord. Lord, we break every spirit of oppression and depression. Sexual immoral spirits, we cut you off. From the root, we uproot, shatter, shut your tongue right now. Command you to flee from her life, from her house, from her marriage. In the name of Jesus, let the peace of God that passes our understanding come upon her now. To insulate her mind and her thoughts and her emotions. 
and our feelings. Regulate them now under the power and the authority of your word, Lord. Wash her in your presence now. Wash her with your word. Wash her in your spirit. In the name of Jesus. And make her, Rababas, Ekondelebesa, abundantly clean, inside and outside. And grant her the assurance to know it is well <sighs> with her soul to depend on you and to know you are more than able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all she could ever think hope or imagine in Jesus' name praise God somebody bless him somebody bless the Lord hallelujah it's time to release you praise god you may be seated we're gonna release you give you a chance to so as you've been ushers will give you an envelope to do so as the lord has laid upon your heart while you're doing so hallelujah we'll speak the last word to those who are watching online we have further things to do so we got to get into this place real soon praise god all right those who are watching online and watching an increase in faith Deliverance Ministries International. We are 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan, declaring the gospel of Christ. May not be the gospel you're used to hearing, but check the contents, check the scripture, check the text, and you'll see that we are accurate with the word of God. Others make excuses, but we are telling you what the word of God says, and that's what we hold ourselves to, to the word of God, to live by the word and teach others the word. David said that the Lord should give him a new heart, create a new heart in him, a clean heart, and renew the right spirit in him. He says, then I will teach transgressors your way, and sinners will be converted unto you. Come on. So even David himself had to turn from sin, and he knew turning from sin would give him moral authority to really instruct and lead others into true salvation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So we encourage you to know the word. We have a book release year before last year. It's on Amazon.com. It's called The Gospel of the Kingdom, subtitled The Gospel That Jesus Preached. We wanted to know because many say they know the gospel, but they hear me speaking some things today that they say, uh, oh, I never heard it like that. <laughs> well, there's more. <laughs> All right, so we wanted to get the book. I believe it to be an eye opener for you and really launch you in a deeper wave of anointing and power with the Lord. And we know that it is true because it's not my words, it's the word of the Lord. You know, Paul wrote letters, and when he wrote letters, many would say, just letters he wrote, but he quoted some scriptures from the Old Testament. But then we found out that no, his letters were actually scriptures because Peter said, those who struggle with Paul's writings in his letters struggle with his script with them as they do with other scriptures. In other words, Peter is saying, Paul's letters were scriptures. Why? Because it's the word of God put in writing. That's what scripture really is anyway. It's the word of God put in writing. And can God, is God still speaking to the church? Oh yes, he is. And so there's more for you to learn and to receive from the Lord. And it's in your benefit that you seek to know so. Because the word of God says, every gift that the Lord has given to the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, said he's given it for the equipping of the saints. That they come in the knowledge of the Son of God, the unity of the faith, and be no longer as children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. So there's a preparation for what is to come. That you need to get through more learning and understanding and applying what God is revealing to you. And he says you live by every word. Not some, not most word. Every word that proceeds out of his mouth. And God is still speaking. And you need to still be listening and obeying what he's telling you to do. Amen. Praise God. So once you get the book, you can go on Amazon.com. Type in the search box, Richard V. Fagan. The book will come up. You can order the book anywhere around the world through Amazon.com. Or download it through Kindle. Or you can, if you're in our vicinity, you can order it from us. We have had a couple is still here in the church. So if you're close by, you can get it from us. But those who are not can still use Amazon or Kindle. And of course, it will be a useful tool to push, accelerate your walk and fellowship with the Lord to new levels. Amen? That's what we've been given to the church as fivefold ministry to do. And so I want you to encourage, be encouraging the word, encouraging the Lord 
to be strong in him and in the power of his might. Praise God. Want to get more of the teachings? Send up friends request to Richard Fagan on Facebook. Be plugged into all our live stream services that are streamed on Facebook. And also we edit it and put more scripture to it on our YouTube channel and other social pages you see on the screen. We encourage you to connect with us so you can get more teachings daily. The Lord ministered to his disciples daily. Not once a week, not Sunday only, Saturday only. No, it's every day the Lord ministered to his disciples. Because they need that daily feeding in the word to grow spiritual and be strong. And to contend with the enemy and win. Amen. And so you can't just hope to win and win. You've got to be trained and developed and equipped. As the devil is coming with strategies and with te techniques and conspiracy and ambushes and traps. And you've got to be able to outwit him. Huh? And, uh, and, and overpower him. Praise God. And so we want you to know the word. To equip you to do such in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So come on with us and follow the teachings and you get much more. We also have teachings in the house that is not live streamed. That is scripted. Put in writing in what we call our daily devotional. And of course it's dated day to day out of a month. And put in monthly editions that can be sent to your phone as a WhatsApp message. But it's really sent to you like an ebook that you can read on your device. It's free of charge. We already accepted the charge on that. And giving it to you as a love gift to boots your faith daily in the Lord. It will be a great book to you for your devotions daily. To build your faith daily in the Lord. It will be powerful in training you and teaching you step by step the word. The mysteries of the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. Those who want to know more about us, check out our website. It's increasingfaithintl.org. That's increasingfaithintl.org. That org. Those who have been following the ministry and been blessed by the ministry and want to sow to the ministry, can sow to the website. The information is there. Also, if you want to get the love gift we are offering to you, can request it through the number on the screen. The information is also there. It's 876 839 We are here listening and ready to help you in your walk with the Lord. Connect with us and let's do the work together and see the mighty works of the Lord manifest more and more in our lives in faith. Amen. Praise God. Will you bless today? Amen. Blessed to have you all and blessed to see you all in the house. For those who join us online, thank you for doing so. Encourage others to do the same and can always share the presentation with others who are not available to see it, that they can see it at an available time to still boost their faith with your loved ones and you can let it be a family thing too that the family sits and watch it together on YouTube to build a family devotional section. Some want to have devotion but they say they don't know to teach the word. So it's nice to have a teaching of word there and you can still sit down and pray together and build a family love and unity in the Lord. Amen. Family that prays together stays together. And it's good to pray and obey the word that will not allow you to be locked in a position in the Lord. Amen. Good communication and obedience with the Lord will produce fruitful results. Amen. Praise God. We may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. Bless you all. In Jesus' name.